Hello folks, it's Oliver Pett here from Mechanical Creations. Thank you so much for joining me. In this series of videos, I'm going to be showing you my process into building the Magician, from prototype to making 30 of these automata. To give you some context, the Magician is based on my original automaton I made back in 2000. And unfortunately, he doesn't work anymore. But because I love the idea so much, I decided to make four of this version back in 2020. Now, Back by popular demand, I'm going to be making 30 magicians based on this prototype. Although the basic concept of the piece is the same, I've redesigned the automaton to make it easier to manufacture, and I've also changed the timing and the detail to the character. Before I go through the process of the build, I'm going to show you what he does and how he does it. The magician lifts the cover to reveal a rabbit. After lowering the cover, he waves his wand three times. He then lifts the cover again to reveal that the rabbit has disappeared, while continually moving his head and eyes. The action starts with the crank of the handle on the side of the box. The operation of the automaton requires a slow, steady speed in order for it to function correctly. To help with that, I've reduced the speed to the main shaft via wooden spur gears with a 3 to 1 ratio. The magician's left hand waves his wand. The hand rotates on a shaft that runs up the forearm on the other end of the shaft is a crank that comes out of the inside of the arm. This is connected to the follower and its cam via a linkage. The action of the magician's right hand lifts the cover. It has to lift vertically in order not to obstruct the rabbit, then swivels back to reveal the rabbit. The joint mechanism in the shoulder plays an important part in organising these actions. A long stride is needed to complete the whole movement which requires a large eccentric cam. The larger of the pinwheel gears on the main shaft, which operates the trapdoor, works in two halves. The first half of the rotation of the large gear drives the small pinwheel gear a full turn. Opening and rotating the trapdoor, the second half of the rotation locks the smaller pinwheel gear into position, preventing the trapdoor from collapsing. The trapdoor operates with the assistance of a spring-loaded brass arm. As it returns upward, it's guided accurately back into the slot. Both the head and eye movements are controlled by cams on a separate shaft that runs parallel to the main shaft and is connected to it via spur gears. I used a 3 in 1 gear ratio to slow down the motion. The head is mounted on a hollow shaft that runs down through the body to a crank, allowing it to rotate via a series of linkages and levers to the follower and cam. Eyes are controlled by a rod that moves linear up the hollow neck shaft to the head. The mechanism inside the head converts this motion into a rotating left-right eye movement. Now you know how he works, let me show you how I built the prototype. First of all, I set about analysing the 2020 Magician to see where I could make improvements. It had to be completely serviceable and easily manufactured, unlike I've done to the earlier version. Using a free CAD software called LibreCab, I redesigned the Magician from the ground upwards. Although the basic layout is the same, I changed a lot of the geometry and profiles of the components. One of the changes I made was to extend the time the Magician held the cover. However, in doing this, I had to then decrease the time the trapdoor took to perform its manoeuvre. This was because both operations were done in timing with each other on a single rotation. Once the designs were complete, I started with making the sculpture. Its geometry was pretty much the same as the original, which I took sizes and dimensions from, and then I cut the individual parts to a basic block form. Now, before I carved the sculpture, I drilled all the appropriate holes for the shafts and fixings. In the past, I've done this in the opposite way and has become difficult to clamp the carved pieces and then drill to the required dimensions. I'm now able to carve the basic shape of the magician using a combination of craft knife and sander. I always regularly assess the shape and form of the sculpture and bring together other parts to make sure they look and feel right. In recent projects, I've evolved to add detail rather than carve it out. Here, I'm using a combination of both. I carve out the bottom of the jacket and the cummerbund, and I've added using thick card the detail of the shirt and the jacket. I've wrapped the collar around a former to create a space for the neck to sit in. Mixing up a small amount of two-part filler, I've blocked in the gaps around the collar and filled inside the neck so I can drill out a cleaner hole. 
To create the head, I used my CNC machine to carve out the detail from my original files of the 3D head. I sculptured on a powerful freeware computer program called Blender. The head is carved from two timber blanks milled to size, one for the front of the head and the other for the back. With scrap timber, I stuck and extended on either side of the blanks tabs that securely held the work to the bed of the CNC machine. There were several stages to making the head. First, I machined the inside of both blanks to house the mechanisms for the eyes. Then the blanks were turned over to be roughed out using a 6mm router bit and then carved using a 2mm ball nose bit. The whole process took about six hours. My original magician, the two halves of the head, was stuck together along with the mechanics inside. I've since realised that this is not a good idea and I'm now an advocate of designing every component to be serviceable. So I've included screw holes from the back of the head to clamp the two halves of the head together. I've just noticed a few little design faults on the head that I've just carved. Firstly, the cavity inside the head was too deep and I've penetrated through to the outside of the face. And secondly, more of an aesthetic issue, the eyes are slightly misaligned and they look too close together. Thankfully, I've prepared myself with spare blanks because I knew this was going to happen. I do make mistakes. I'm going to make the design changes and I'm going to recut the head. The original eye mechanism that housed inside the head worked well. However, they were difficult to manufacture. Keeping to the basic concept of the original mechanisms, I redesigned them to be easily produced. Building and testing the parts that made up the eye mechanism worked perfectly until I brought both halves of the head together. Operating from the shaft, I felt some resistance. I knew with some confidence what was causing the problem, as I have faced this issue before. If the surface of the slot is not sufficiently smooth for the pin to slide, it tends to get stuck on the grain of the timber. But to solve the problem, I decided to build the part out of PVC. I put it back together and it worked a treat. My next step was to carve out the remaining detail of the head where the CNC machine could not reach due to undercut. I sanded down all the remaining sculpted parts to a good finish and applied three coats of primer, 12 hours apart, sanding between each coat for a smooth finish. I then set to work making the rest of the components. The gears and cams are made from 6mm birch plywood. Using the drawings from my CAD software, I prepared the CNC machine for cutting the profile of the components. From a scrap piece of plywood, I also included the array pattern of the pinned gears. Drilling the holes slightly bigger, I placed the pins into the jig and inserted them into the gears with the aid of a vise. This method gives you a quick and accurate result. All the gears and cams require brass collets of some type. These are machined on my lathe with a tap thread on the collar for an M3 grub screw. This is used to secure it to the shaft. There is an all sorted lot of brass and stainless steel wear throughout the automaton. Used for various functions such as bearings, spacers, shaft and levers. There were several components that required brazing together to create a part. Silver solder was used to obtain a nice strong bond. I will go into more detail of these components and the manufacturing process in the second video. I've got all the components ready. Uh, I'm going to start slowly putting them together, cut the box uh, out of cheap Maranti to begin with, just so I know that everything uh, fits together okay. Although I will make mistakes. Obviously the walnut's really expensive, so I don't want to make mistakes using that timber. First of all, I'm going to put on this component. So it's spring loaded. They require some pan head screws, but I've only got these countersink ones at the moment, so they'll have to do. Let's get the supports in. So you can see I've already put brass sleeves in. They act as bearings. Um, you can see I've already made a mistake. I um, stuck that piece on the wrong side. Fits in there. This is the other support. I need to get this component on first. Again, he goes into that slot. Now for the box. I've put the pins in. I've put the shaft in. And I've got two washers either side and that will go into the support just notice my first issue it should go all the way across so there's a big gap here 
which it's not going to affect me at the moment. I can just, I can fill that out with some washers. I can attach the other arm now, but let's see if it works. Um, not very well. Okay, I think that's just me playing around with it a bit, but that's the bottom part. We've got all the location holes there for the springs. It's the right hand side. Again, I've got all the brass sleeves in. Um, that's a shaft that goes in. So we need to do this in order. 24 tooth spur gear in. This cam that controls the waving of the wand. 10 toothed gear, then the cam. And then finally, we've got this pinned gear. Let's tighten those up. That works okay. Okay, so this is the linkage between the pinned gear and uh, the revolving of the trap door. We'll get the handle in it's for the handle. So we're just putting a spur gear on, some tweezers. It's a bit tight. I'm just going to run that through with a four mil reamer. That's better. Let's put the handle on. Right, let's see if that works. Lovely, it does. Let's do the back now. These two, you can see here, this is a uh, to save on space, I've attached the collet to both the spur gear and the cam. I've got another cam here, so that's going to go on first. Right, I can see an issue here. The collet is uh, it's too big. I can't get it on this shaft because of the gear. That's not a big issue. We can change the, the collet on that somehow. So I've made the change. And you can see here, collet is a lot shorter. I've also had to take the sleeve out of that hole and make it smaller. It just slides in. Now what also I've done, so the collet being on that side, I've just changed it to that side now. Right, we go in with that. Leave some space, let's tighten that up. It works fine now. No friction, everything seems to um, work nicely. Then we want to get in the cam followers. So the shaft is pushed in there. I've got a spacer. Next component is this little collet. It slips on there, it just stops the, the shaft from coming out. Then we have this component that controls the lifting of the right hand. Right, next component, and these are two slightly different. Right, there's a spring that goes on there. Or I think we'll put those on afterwards. So that cam follower controls the wand, and then that controls the waving. No, what's that control? The moving of the head. <laughs> and that's too big. Let's cut that down. That's cut off. Just notice that's hitting against that cam. So we'll just move it over a little bit. Right, another issue. That cam is just scraping along that cam follower. So we'll have to cut that down a bit, I think. I just thought this is for the wand. And this is the bit of wire that goes, that will need to go on first. Otherwise I won't get it on when this is in its position. I've got some springs to put in, but I've got a feeling they may be too short. So I'm going to do this with a pair of tweezers by go into the hole. He's not finished yet, but it's, it's all there. So this component, little grub screw, that just uh, keeps that in. We've got this part of the arm that's just screwed in with a pan head brass machine screw, free to rotate. It gets slotted in and tightened up. Uh, we could put the other arm on. 
brass tube that goes down through his body. He does screw in underneath there, but I'm not going to bother with that at the moment. That tube's holding it in. It'll fit in like that. One of the wires. Well, I think I'll need to take that out, put the wire on, and then put it back on again. That's on. There's a little hole there. So through the cuff and through the back of the hand there, they should all link up. Okay, that seems to sit okay. It's hiding the trapdoor. Doesn't go up very high. We think we need to tighten a few things up. Well, that's a bit pathetic at the moment. It needs to lift up a lot higher, I think. Let's get the rest of the components on. This component on. This changes the direction from horizontal to vertical. Let's get the head sorted out. Let's open it up and add the components. Eyes on, into the head. I'm just going to glue that in for now. Um, but that will be part of the, the cast itself. So just a little bit of super glue on that. Okay, on with the head. We'll tighten that up. He goes on like that. Oh, oh that's got all super glue on that. Um, got these two components, which will go onto the head wire on this linkage let's see if that works this is the linkage for the eyes i think that's the eyes working finally we'll get the wand on hand with the wand just a temporary wand at the moment. I've just quickly bent that wire up into position so that gets hooked on like so and that slips in through the back of the hand. Yeah, that gets reattached. Little grub screw at the back of the hand. That will tighten that onto the shaft. There are a few little teething problems, but in general, I'm happy with it. And we're going to go away, get the box made out of the walnut, get him all cleaned up and painted, and then we'll have a final product. So I've added the handkerchief in his pockets and a bow tie. I've resprayed that black instead of the red band, and I'm going to add some material around that. But I think he's done. Thank you so much for watching. If you find these videos of some value, you may consider subscribing. Give us a thumbs up and join me in part two where I'll be crafting 30 of these automata.